In this video, we're going to solve problems F10-1 and F10-3 from Hibbler's Statics textbook 14th edition. In both problems, we are given a shape that is bounded by the lines y cubed equals x squared, x equals 1, and y equals 0. That shape is the one shown in this figure. Now, we are tasked with finding the moment of inertia about the y-axis and the moment of inertia about the x-axis for this figure. The process is actually very similar for both, but we'll see that it's actually easier if we take different approaches for each moment of inertia. So let's begin. When we look at a problem such as this, our first step should be to set up a coordinate system. Since we're looking at the x and y planes, our coordinate system should be the x-y coordinates. Let me select a random point at, line, at the line y cubed equals x squared. This random point will have coordinates x and y. Now for this random point, I can take a differentially small rectangular element and evaluate the centroid of that element. My differentially small element will have a height of dy and a base width of 1 minus x. Now for this differentially small element, we can say that the area of the element dA is equal to the product of the base times the height. Now of course because x is a function of y and vice versa, we really don't want to have two different variables that are functions of each other in our integral. So let's express everything in terms of y. We know that for our point x, y, the following relationship will be held, y cubed equals x squared. So we can express x as a function of y as follows, where x is equal to y to the power of 3 over 2. We can write this down in our area equation. And so we have an expression for dA. But now we also have to find the coordinates of the centroid x squiggly and y squiggly. In this case, the centroid of this differentially small rectangle will be located at my y coordinate. So y squiggly equals y. However, the centroid for the x coordinate is located at the center of this rectangle which means that the location will be somewhere about here in the figure. Now, we know that this entire length is 1 minus x, because this length from the y-axis to this point is simply x. The length from the y-axis to the centroid of this rectangle should be equal to 1 minus half of 1 minus x, or simply 1 minus x over 2. Now, you'll see that we really don't need the x squiggly coordinate for this problem. However, the y squiggly coordinate will be important in this problem. Now, for this problem, we won't really focus on the relationship between x squiggly and x, but we will use our y coordinate. So now we can use our y coordinate to find the moment of inertia about the x axis. Let's remember that the moment of inertia is equal to the integral of y squiggly squared elevate, evaluated over an area dA. In this case, we've expressed our area in terms of y. We also know that y squiggly is equal to y, and we evaluate y from 0 to 1. Now this doesn't look like an easy integral to solve, but again, if we evaluate it, it's actually not that difficult. We can multiply y to get y squared minus y elevated to the power of 2 plus 3 over 2, which is simply 7 over 2. And now we can solve this integral. Evaluating this integral from 0 to 1 will give us 1 third minus 
two ninths. This is equal to one ninth, or approximately 0.111 units to the power of four. Let's suppose that our units are given in meters. So in this case, x equals one meter, and this x and y axis are in meters. That means that our moment of inertia will be in units of meters to the power of four. And that's how we find the moment of inertia about the x-axis. Notice that we use the y-coordinate for the moment of inertia about the x-axis because we want to find the moments of each individual differentially small rectangle as a distance from the x-axis. And distance from the x-axis is y. We can use this same process to find the moment of inertia about the y-axis. We already know that x squiggly is equal to 1 over x 1 minus x over 2. However, this will result in a longer integral. So there's an easy way to solve this. For our point xy, instead of taking a differential horizontal element, let's take a differential vertical element. This vertical element will have a base of dx and a height of y, which means that our differential area dA should be equal to y dx. And we can express y as a function of x to leave everything in terms of one variable. We know that y cubed equals x squared, therefore y should be equal to x to the power of two thirds. So now we can use this relationship to evaluate our integral in terms of x. For this particular differential area, the coordinate of the centroid x squiggly will be at x. So the moment of inertia about the y-axis should be equal to the integral of x squiggly squared evaluated over an area dA. Let's solve this now. First, we know that x squiggly equals x. We also know that dA equals x to the two-thirds times dx. This integral is evaluated from x equals 0 to x equals 1. And if we multiply x squared times x to the power of two-thirds, we will get x to the power of 2 plus two-thirds. Now this integral is actually very easy to solve. This gives us a moment of inertia about the y-axis of 3 elevenths meters to the power of 4. Or we can approximate it as 0.273 meters to the power of 4. So that's how you find the moment of inertia about the x and the y axes. Notice that depending on your integral, it may be easier to change your differential element. But even if you choose not to do this, your answer should still be the same. It might just take a little bit longer to get there.